1977, Robin Davidson set out to walk from Alice Springs to the Indian Ocean, accompanied only by four camels and her dog. Along the way, she was photographed by National Geographic photographer Rick Smolin. Her journey and Rick's photographs led to the best-selling book, Tracks, and has now been turned into a film which opens in Australia on Thursday. Let's have a sneak preview. Your plan is ridiculous. Well, why don't you just shorten the trip? Tully and I will come with you. I just want to be by myself. You must be mad, girly. You know, that's about 2,000 miles. Six months of hard walk. You want to die out there or something? It's been a movie in our minds ever since Robin Davidson wrote that book. And Robert Davidson and Rick Smolin join us now on News Breakfast. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're delighted that you're both here with us this morning. That is fantastic. J just first impressions, just looking at, at this, this story that you're on, this adventure together, mm. being turned into a movie, what do you feel? Look, I'm pleased with the film, and I think there's very few writers who end up saying that. The whole process from right when Emile Sherman bought it to, to now has been a really delightful process. And Rick? Um, it's very surreal to see something <laughs> that was such a big part of your life um, on the silver screen. And I agree with Robin that the way that they've treated uh, Robin's book, Tracks, which is a diff diff very different way of experiencing the story. I highly recommend anyone that sees the movie it also reads the book. Mm. Um, they've managed to preserve the mystery of why she did this trip. And that's one of the questions. People go to this movie and if you walk out feeling like you can do anything with your life, not do a camel trip, but that you can sort of <laughs> challenge yourself and, and face your fears. Mm. Rick, it's really interesting that you raise that because, Robin, <clears throat> you have always been elusive on this subject. It's always been difficult to, to pin mm. you down as to why, why mm. you were driven to do this. As um, looking back on that, that much, much younger woman who, who, who did that trip, is there a different answer to that question now as to why you did it? No, look, I think it's unanswerable, really. You know, it, Do you there's know so why many... you did it? Well, yes and no. It's just that it's so complicated. How can we say what led to any decision, really? It's, uh, there are manifold reasons. Are you a very different... I'm sliding out from under I know you are, and I'm just going to give <laughs> up. <laughs> I tried in the past, and I'll keep trying again in the future. Um, are you a very different person to that, um, to that young girl in 1977? Look, I think of her, it's, it is, as Rick said, it's quite surreal having to go back to the trip all the time in these different iterations. Yes. Um, and I think of her now, that earlier self, as um, I feel great affection for her. I wish I had her chutzpah. Um, <laughs> And she feels like a, a favourite niece or something. <laughs> <laughs> and Rick, I asked this question advisedly, given you've got a fantastic camera draped around your neck. How did you enter the picture in, as part of Robin's journey? You were sent over from national, by National Geographic to, to take snaps as part of a, of a sponsorship arrangement. Well, actually, I was in Alice Springs doing a cover story for Time magazine. And I met Rob. Robin was actually washing the windows of my hotel. And I saw this beautiful young girl in a sarong, blue eyes, blonde hair, and I had three cameras around my neck. I was 28 years old, so I took some pictures of her, and that was our first meeting. She wasn't very pleased at having her picture taken. Um, and then uh, in the course of talking to her, she said she'd written to National Geographic a year earlier, and mm -hmm. they never answered. And she asked if she could use my name. Um, and I think when they actually agreed to fund the trip, Robin, you know, had second thoughts because the whole point of this was she didn't, she was, she didn't do this to become famous, to write a book, to have a movie made about her. It was her own private reasons, and suddenly she was stuck with this guy that's showing up several times during the trip, kind of, you know, dogging her and kind of breaking the stillness of her own you know, thoughts. And to be frank, she made your life hell, didn't she? During um, parts of the trick. Well, you know, I, I, in the nicest possible way. In the nicest way. possible way. <laughs> The thing that I love about Robin, what I loved about her then and what I love about her now is that Robin doesn't suffer fools, okay? So Robin challenges you and makes you think about things and she doesn't just let you... I mean, one of the things she said to me early on on the trip is that Americans treat friendship like Valium. I said, what does that mean? It was like the, 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 the challenge of the day. She said, well, when I see Americans together, they're always saying, don't worry, everything will work out, it'll be fine. And I said, that's a bad thing because... <laughs> she said, because in Australia, if you care for somebody and they're doing something stupid, you hit them over the head with a two by four. <laughs> you, 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 don't, you, don't, you risk your friendship to, to help your friend. A long term friendship. So, yeah. I mean, it was that kind of directness. It, for me, it was like growing up, I spent, you know, the, the time I spent with Robin was like my education. Yeah. Your photographs, of course, 
are, are so well known. I, I doubt there's someone, anyone watching this morning who hasn't seen the images or indeed read the book tracks. I think we have some of them that we can show as we're chatting to you this morning. What were the particular challenges for you photographing out in the desert? Well, think about that. Back then we were using film. So first mm. of all, I had a hope that the film I bought was, was not like a bad batch. Then I had a hope that... Then you had uh, that, to keep it stable afterwards. That, that it didn't get baked by the sun. <laughs> yes. That, that, that it didn't... That there weren't dust, you know, the, the, resert, the red desert dust, which is the finest dust in the world, yeah. was it scratching all my film? Yeah. Did it get x-rayed on the way back? One, one of the things I bought, I broke a cardinal rule, which is that Robin didn't wear clothes quite a bit during the trip. <coughs> and um, I didn't want to send pictures of her naked back to National Geographic. And so National Geographic would have published them, I'm sure. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were all those covers. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I buy National the Geographic. Wrong color. Yeah. So, I mean, as a young photographer, it's my first assignment for them. The rule is you have to send all your film, and they're supposed to decide what they want to use. Right. But I didn't feel comfortable sharing that. With, with them, so um, I started developing my film in, here in Melbourne and only sending them what I wanted them to see, and they were furious. They said, you'll never work for us again next time, and I just kept doing it, but they, everyone loved the story so much. I mean, it's the, it's the fifth most popular story mm. In 125 years of National Geographic. Oh, wow. And now, now with the movie See, coming out. No, oh, one other thing that's I want to say about Robin's book is when, when Trax came out, <laughs> Trax has sold 1.8 million copies around the world, and um, it was the most stolen book in Australia of the year. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> a great <laughs> honor. Stop, <laughs> right. Stop. Let's, hope, let's hope it doesn't get repeated this because year. Because of the photography, and, and uh, you take a beautiful photograph. You have always taken a beautiful photograph. and. And as a, as a gorgeous young woman, beyond me. getting a getting a kit off and whenever, whenever she could, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and traveling the desert in a sarong, you mm, lunatic! Really? I don't know what that no did sunblock, to your skin. No yeah, so, not back uh, there. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> the sarongs are great; you can wear them as a brolly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All these years later, are you comfortable with uh, the impact of that book uh, had not just on Australia but around mm. the world? And yeah, I mean, again, it's it was so unpredicted, and I had no intention ever of writing a book. Um, so the whole thing has escalated way beyond my um, control, but these days I think, yeah, why not, just let it go. Now I, I have to ask you, because mm. one of my favourite books of the last couple of years uh. was Salman Rushdie's autobiography, which oh, I, yes. just, I just loved and devoured as this Did gossipy, you? hilarious, <laughs> mad thing, it was great. Uh. And of course the famous love affair between the two of you. When you read the infamous, book... Infamous, I think we call it infamous. <laughs> I'll call it notorious. Um, when you read the book, and I assume mm. you did read... Um, Look, his... I haven't. I, I will. Haven't? No, it just. I will read it, I promise, I just haven't. <laughs> yet. Oh, come on. No, I haven't. I think okay. she's telling the truth, Virginia. All right. <laughs> when friends have told you about what they've read about, <laughs> well, I, about it's, the affair. It's a very good way to find out. Yes, it, exactly. You know, and I think he's been quite... Um... Has, he been, has, he, has he told it as it was? Is, is oh, my question. Of course not. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you innocent. You. <laughs> no, I'm sure not. But... Um, I think he has been quite kind to me, from what I hear. Oh yes, yes. Oh yeah, no. Still compared to all the others, still the, still the great, great love. I think. Uh, um, Robin Davis and Rick Smolin, really terrific to have you. I want in a photograph. Can, can you yeah, take we'll a photograph? get a photograph. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, guys. By world renowned <laughs> photographer, the only yeah, time it will ever happen. Can I tell you one last thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, Tracks is opening on 200 screens across Australia. Yep. Just to put that in perspective, the King's Speech opened on 99. Oh. So that's how confident, that's how, it, how much excitement there is about Tracks. That's right all now. because of that. It's all because of. It's all because of that. That that, <laughs> that image there, created by this woman here and that bloke over there. Really mm -hmm. nice to meet you. Pleasure. Thanks, Go well. Thanks very much.